everybody sticker sticker stickers equipped <laughs> happy tuesday we are here to bring a ray of sunshine uh, a squeaky ray of sunshine <laughs> good girl into uh your morning on this tuesday um <laughs> i was like not that late mostly because justin is like uh doing his thing remotely today uh justin's not with us it's just me uh, and he had to, he didn't get the, he didn't tell me he got in the stream right away. So that was two minutes late. Woo. Woo. This is sad, kitty kitty. Yeah. Tell it to Ed. Yeah. I bet Ed is late a lot. Yeah. That's right. She's good at, like lying down with a big smile on her face and she's got her paw on her ball. It's really cute. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our election day footage of Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne. We do not have a disembodied voice, Justin, today as he is rebuilding the studio down at Reaper. Um, so I will be here. Me and Kiri will be here entertaining you alone, which is fine. I hope everybody is having a good morning, considering all the crazy media coverage that we're heading toward. And I'm just checking my mic. I'm like, wait, did I turn this on? <laughs> it's one of those days. It's one of those days. But that's all right. That's all right. We're here and we're going to shed some light, literally, um, on this troll uh, and work on the lighting on him it's reading okay but there are some things to to check so so we can talk about lighting a lot today i would really like to talk about lighting so lighting is a bright and happy subject and i don't have my reaper polo on today because i realized that i needed to wash them all <laughs> it's that kind of week it's that kind of week so yeah so instead i have my my uh, my optimistic astronaut fox you know so you know there we are that's where that's where Anne's brain is today there we are. We're back. So yes, good morning, everybody. Let's pop over to mini cam. Mini cam. It is indeed me, Nomadzi. Humans love to state the obvious, as Douglas Adams uh, was wont to point out. It's been a long month all week. <laughs> ah well, you know, it'll start to resolve today. A lot of the stress and. Uh, and it'll go one way or the other and none of us can control it all we can do is control our reaction to it so me i'm in a really good mood today i don't know i'm an optimist though i like i'm an inveterate eternal optimist like i always am i find it's much much uh much less stressful than being a pessimist <laughs> ah. let me see here we're gonna mix up some troll flesh fleshy flesh of the troll and we're going to mix up some troll flesh plus yellow plus white. Yeah, Justin is not with us today, Twisted Oma. He is uh, currently chained to a, a giant metal ball um, in the Reaper studio, uh, reconstructing it after, you know, having to deconstruct it. So hopefully this will result in a great studio experience for Luca's show tomorrow, which is premiering tomorrow at 3 p.m. USA Central Time. Remember to tune in, please, and give Luca a very, very warm welcome to the Reaper Show uh, show team because he's awesome and he deserves all your love and attention. Plus, he's a really good painter. Ah, I got my troll flesh, got my stuff. I'm not going to thin it too much. It's about two to one, roughly. Maybe the yellow is actually about a three to one. I probably should actually drop a little bit more than that and make it two to one. Boop, there it is. And then I think I was needing uh, a little bit of yellow plus white, which is really ogre skin plus vampiric mist because we're using all dungeon dwellers for this or almost all dungeon dwellers. Yes. <laughs> I can't quite say meh, Val. I, I'm, you know, I, do, I don't, I try not to use the word meh. I used to have a t-shirt with meh on it, but I actually do care. I just prefer to keep a very optimistic, caring mindset. No matter what happens, things will go forward. And hopefully some things will change for the better. No matter what they are. Like, I believe in, you know... I believe in good things. Let's just say that. I'm, I am always an optimist. 
I just really, uh, yeah, but I try not to, I, I, I embrace the apathy and the kind of apathetic, like, verbiage when I was a college student and uh, afterwards for a long time. But it really isn't me. Um, I think I live a better life when I avoid saying things like, oh, well, meh, you know, that kind of thing. What you say influences a lot of how you think. Oh, not make sure if we'll manage the entire stream. Well, even I drop a swear word every once in a while. And let's face it, Kernico, with somebody like Ed around, <laughs> like, like I don't think any of us are approaching. <laughs> any of us can approach that. I don't think we can aspire to that. <laughs> so no matter what, I think we'll be fine. Like, I, I wouldn't want to see anybody dropping F-bombs all over the place on Reaper's channel, because it's not really what we're about. But, you know... If somebody makes a mistake, I make a mistake every once in a while, so. Yeah, the troll is rocking. He's, uh, I, what I'm really looking at now is lighting. This dramatic lighting that we've got going on here. And I need to troubleshoot it just a little bit. So we're gonna look at it and troubleshoot it today. Because it's reading, it's reading almost perfect, but it's like, it's definitely got a couple flaws in it. So we'll, uh, we'll attack those today and see if we can analyze on stream what our problems are and uh, see if we can fix them. So I'm mixing up a selection of greens. I also want my black indigo for my shadows, so I need to figure out where I stuffed that. Remember, that's coming out as a Kickstarter color. And I think uh, the last day to adjust your pledge manager is the end of this month. Am I correct on that, guys? Is it December 1st or end of November? Because we have to, at that point, we have to lock in and commit to numbers from China. And again, I'm going about two to one with all of this. Because I have a base coat down already, I really do not need to uh, to go real thick with my paint. I can afford to go thin. And so there's my selection of skin colors. So we've got our black indigo. We've got our troll hide, which is a bones color. We've got a troll hide plus ogre skin and vampiric mist. And then we've got an ogre skin plus, plus vampiric mist. And then we've got pure vampiric mist here. I'm also going to... There was an older Kickstarter. Saltor. This is uh, Bones 5 we're talking about. Bones 5 was last year. Or was it early this year? I don't remember. <laughs> this year has been a blur. A blur. Anyway, Bones 5, or yeah, was our last uh, Kickstarter. But it, the pledge manager is still open for late pledges. It is about to end. So if you still want to get somewhat of a deal, not as good of a deal as you would get um, going in, you know, if you had been during pledging during the time of the Kickstarter, but you do still get a deal uh, if you pledge now, as opposed to waiting for it to get out in retail. And it's up to you to determine whether the amount you save is worth it. Well, I mean, that's what it's... Okay, so Luca's European... And that's how they talk. <laughs> like, that's that seems to be, from what I've seen, that seems to be a lot of the European streaming painting culture. Now, not all of it, but I do see a lot of guys dropping F-bombs on their stream, and that could be just that's the audience, right? That's audience expectation, or it could just be the way they roll. Like, it could just be that there's, like, not into censorship. I'm going to drop the F-bomb because it's how I talk and just deal with it, right? And that's fine. It changes a bit when you're on Reaper. You've got to think more family friendly, but we'll see. I mean, he has time. I mean, it took me a while to kind of, I, I always put my brain on family friendly at paint club and even I screwed up every once in a while. It takes a while to get your brain into that, you know, that I worked retail for a lot of my life and that got me in the mode. <laughs> so I, I do have the family friendly switch in my brain that I can flip if I have to, but uh yeah, exactly. He tuned it way back. Right, exactly. So he's going to, because it's a different audience, right? And it's not what people are looking for here, um, for the most part. Although, you know, I, I guess there's a place for everything. But I mean, for me, I know it's always a turn off. Like if I, if I go to one of my Overwatch streamers, you know, and I go to watch somebody and they're just, you know, all their, every third word is a swear word, I just turn them off, you know? So I totally get it. That's weird, Valandar, uh, because, wait. Hold on, let me see if Windows uh, threw something, because I got a, 
I got um, an update from Streamlabs today, Velendar, so let me just make sure that uh, everything is kosher on the sound front. One second while I open up my sound mixer. Sound settings. One sec, I'm sure it's this. Device properties. Yep. Thanks for the heads up, Valandar. Look, now I'm loud. Much better. Yeah, whenever it's usually when Windows updates, but this time it was when OBS updates. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. I mean, I adjusted my mic to be closer to my face, too. Like, you guys almost, almost can see it. It's right here. But, um, yeah. Well, I shouldn't be quiet anymore, guys, because I just did. I just did an adjustment. So if you still can't hear me, then something's up. Because I just adjusted. I doubled my volume. Okay, that's what I thought. Thanks, Val. Yeah, it wasn't even a Windows update this time. It was OBS that ran an update right before the stream. So, anyway, all we've been doing is kibitzing anyway. Hey, Iggy, what's up? So, all right, let us, let us troubleshoot this. Let me, I need to think, I need to, like, put this in a position where, where it is actually, like, because the thing is, I chose to hit a little bit of highlight here. So I do have some fill light, but if, if this is the case, so, okay, the thing that's bothering me here, where's my vote? There's my vote. See, sticker, everybody put on your sticker. Type louder. Yes, exactly. Hey, no problem, Tristadoma. So, all right. So what I've got here is I've got some light that's putting, that's coming down, right? But it's obvious that this light is actually out a little bit in front of the troll. Well, why is that? Why is it that obvious? Well, because this is kind of recessed here. It goes back under his body. And also we've got his face out here. So we know the light must be at least hitting the front of his face. If it's hitting there, then it's going to be tilted a little bit and hitting his abs because we can see these highlights picking up, right? So we know there's some fill light dropping down here for these abs to have these bright highlights and this hip. But if that's so, this shadow here is totally wrong. Because look at how bright I've made the leg, and the leg is reading perfectly. Like I, The, w the way to look at this, by the way, guys, is to hold it out in a dark room. And uh, like when I hold it out to the side away from my lights and with the backdrop of the dim room behind it, I can really see the light falling on the model just from the model's colors alone. Like, without my all of this light flooding in around me. But the problem here is that I've, I've cleanly telegraphed that there's light here, but then this is super dark. See this? This area? Totally incorrect. So, oh, I did, we get stickers for mail-ins, Gimli. Aw, California gives you a sticker for mail-in. I did mail-in also. Actually, I dropped mine in a ballot, ballot box, but, you know, I could have mailed it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so... Yeah, that's that's sucky. Whoever, whatever states you guys are in, they need to give stickers out. We get stickers for voting mail-in slash drop-off slash absentee. That's really sucky that, that your state does not give you a sticker. Somebody ought to lodge a complaint. The sticker is half the fun. Paint your own sticker. Yes. Yeah, mine too, Daffod Weir. All right. So anyway, so do you guys see how that is? Like if you've got a highlight here, this part of the torso, which is starting to slant down toward the leg, the inner hip bone here, this needs a highlight. Uh, it can't be in shadow because actually it's tilted more toward the light even than this ab is. So this is, this is the problem. This is why I've got kind of a disconnect here when I'm looking down at my lighting here and I'm like, okay, what's wrong? This is wrong. So, and this is why it's wrong, because you can see everything else getting light. You can even see this little ab muscle getting light. So then why is this, which is curving toward a leg that's sticking out into the light, why is this dark? Um, that ab is not big enough to overshadow this area. That's probably, originally I probably had this whole area dark because I was thinking side lighting. But even with that, this, this should still be catching light. This is catching light, for gosh sakes, so this should be. So that's the issue that I'm running into. Now I can fix it. Just make sure when you're trying to do a dramatic light source like this that you're looking at that sort of thing, that you're looking at consistency. Like, look, if I if I put it in the light, you can even see that this area is really light. Like, you can see the light hitting it. So, 
you know, ignore the shadow. That's a Widowmaker. <laughs> I moved my mic closer to me, so I've got Widowmaker spinning in the air here, and the light is kind of in the way of her. Um, so if you see weird moving shadows, it's because I have a miniature Overwatch assassin um, hanging off of my mic. Hello, Jill. Thank you. Yeah, Justin is revamping the studio at Reaper today, so he pretty much uh, put us on our own. We can get into all sorts of trouble. Um, but yeah, thanks, Jill. He'll see it when he gets on. So I'm going to take my troll flesh, mix it with a little bit of that uh, ogre skin and vampiric mix, and start bringing up that area to the point where it'll actually look right. Good, M. Fontana. Yeah, a lot of people seem to have been really good about sending in their vote early, and that's fantastic. I really wish that, I mean, I know that states have to keep their rules really in place because that's what people are voting based on, but, but part of me hopes that after this whole thing, um, states that say that they can't start counting ballots until the actual election day will, you know, maybe pass some referendums to change that. Because if we're going to start getting this many mail-in ballots, it's like, it just makes sense to maybe make, give yourself a head start, right? <laughs> so here we are. We're highlighting this and it already is looking better. See that now that, now we don't have that disconnect anymore. We don't have that band of darkness. Do you see what a huge difference that makes? Like now I can see the light actually going down the entire front of the troll. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I really, he's so close to Dunjo. Like, he really, you know, he's really getting close. And so I like how he looks, so I thought I would spend some time on him. There's still some little things I have to fix here and there on him. He has a couple of mold lines I'm going to probably have to putty and paint over. But, and I need to fix this, uh, this fissure here around his neck. Probably put little a little roll of green stuff there and kind of paint it like a wrinkle or something in the neck um, to make it blend in with everything. But, yeah, I don't mind doing that afterwards. Yeah, it was cra it's crazy. The uh, the records were hitting, right, in voter turnout. It's really exciting, actually. I, I always love to see young people get out to vote because I voted when I was in college. And uh, and so for me, I'm, I'm looking at the young voter tallies ticking up, and I'm just really happy about it. I mean, because when it comes down to it, they're the ones who are going to be living with the results of the decisions that we make now. So they really, I'm glad that we're seeing more engagement from younger people. It, it has a, it, it, it seems to me to indicate a bright future for American politics. That's, that's me. But again, I am an optimist, total optimist. So, and I'm going to be highlighting pretty much this whole space here, guys, because the light falls pretty evenly onto it. I will hit the top of it a little bit more, a little bit brighter, just like with all these, um, all the abs here, just because when it comes out, it is going to stick out just a little bit. I'll just put a line at first, and then I'll broaden it out with some more highlight and kind of blend it in. And the highlight will be brighter toward the outer edge because there is the light falling down into this gap. There's not going to be as much here. I'm going to probably keep this deep shadow, most of it under the abs here. Maybe just a little bit of highlight there. There. So we still have a dramatic shadow going on and it's painted on, but you can see the light falling elsewhere. So that's good. Uh, Valandar, I think he's just a little mutated on the other side. I'm choosing to paint it as three toes on each foot, and this one's just a little bit mutated. Because there's not a real... Well, I guess I, it could be. I guess I can kind of see a nail there. I don't know. It annoys me. I mean, he is a troll, and I'm sure you're right, and he regrows things, and he's got, you know... People were obviously chopping off his toes just for fun. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people seem to be social distancing pretty well, or or it is a lot of early voting, Dragon Eye. So, I mean, we'll see. People obviously feel strongly that they're showing up. One hopes that most of them are wearing masks. I just found out from a friend of mine, a friend of mine from the dog world, which is, those of you know I'm involved in, um, she and her husband and her whole household, including their kids, all got covid um, and to, we had all been wondering why she wasn't responding to emails. 
and they've been like just destroyed by it for a month they all have come through it they're all like slowly recovering but her husband is a type 1 diabetic and she's not in great physical health herself and so it's like they're really having a, a long recovery something that i think maybe gets uh, overlooked a little bit is that you know it's it's been a month and they're still fighting it so some people don't kick it off as fast as others i think Oh, yeah, early voting locations. Yeah, yeah. Nah, we won't go into specific politics, Shadow Raven. All I want is, like, things to get better than they were. I'm, I have high hopes. Whatever your politics, everybody should be happy at mo more voter participation. Like, I like to see this country turning out and saying, this is what we really want. And like I said, I love to see the young people turning out because it's it's important. It's important to make your voice heard when you're younger and there's a bunch of old people in government. I say that as a, as a uh, you know candidate for old, old person. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I certainly am probably an old person to your average uh, high school or college student. So Yeah, fatigue and just weird losing your sense of smell. They lost their sense of smell for like two or three weeks, GB. And so they said it's really weird when it kicks back in and you're readjusting. Oh, wow, I'm crying. I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. We are free to paint any minis we want in whatever color we want. Mostly, I'm just saying, you know, I read a lot. Uh, David's been kind of stressed about it. Like, he, he said he said he's not really that stressed, but he's just, he's got a certain level of anxiety, and so do I. But it's just, like, do the stuff. Just cope, right? Make yourself a nice cup of tea. Watch some awesome, cute cat and dog videos. Paint a mini. Do some writing. In my case, I'm going to the grocery store, but then I'm going to uh, get ready for our D&D &D stream today. I already updated the World Anvil guys. Uh, All Seas Trading Company, which is the rival huge monopoly trading company, um, now has an entry on the World Anvil for our game. And I'm hoping to get a couple more done before the stream. I have them on my list. Uh, when I'm done with my NaNoWriMo word count, I'm permitted to work on more. So I have to do my National Novel Writing Month, but then I can uh, try to catch up a little bit on the World Anvil. There we go. That's a bit better. Gotta, gotta back off and see if it reads correctly. It's reading pretty well. I think I could maybe do a little bit more in here. Just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, I believe. See, I believe in our country and I believe in, in our country people. I believe in all of us. I believe that really when it comes down to it, we just want things to be better for the world and ourselves and our kids or in my case my niece and nephew and their kids um, I believe I believe that Americans do have good intentions in in the majority so I don't think you can be an optimist and not believe that uh, let's see here Kind of going to bring in the back of the leg here. Hmm. All right. So I've got my light sourcing down this side. It's looking pretty okay. You believe you can fly. Cake is eternal. Watch Will Smith do stupid TikToks and chill. <laughs> you can believe anything. And, and if you if you really, truly apply yourself, you may make it come true. I mean, obviously you can't grow wings. Oh, though, who knows? If you wait long enough, there might be genetic treatments. Who knows? Flying flying humans at some far point in the distant future when we're colonizing air worlds, cloud worlds, you know. Maybe. Maybe. 
We just have no idea. Like, if you look at, like, uh, people who are people who are over 100 years old who are passing now, and you think about all the incredible changes that they have seen over the course of their lifespan, and then you look at how fast things are still moving, even if on a, maybe on a less profound day-to-day -day scale, but... Troll hide, what, 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 what? What about troll hide? Now you're a nihilist. I I firmly believe the cup is half full, and you have to like work with your brain to convince it not to embrace the nihilism, Shadow Raven. Do not embrace the chaos. Uh, okay. Oh, DF. Okay, I see. I missed a I missed a question. Thank you. Uh, D DVF blind. Uh, the highlights are yeah, ogre skin and vampire mist. We're using the the dungeon dwellers colors, which is a, a box set that came out. Um. A oh, year or more ago, we we brought out the box set for a ReaperCon, I guess, uh, a couple years back, and so these are the nine four. They're they're in the bones line now, but I'm using a lot of them. And yeah, the base is troll hide, so it's actually the correct troll, quote unquote correct. I don't believe in using colors what they're named for necessarily. Um, the hands and the the fleshy parts here are actually goblin skin. Uh, because I was trying to limit myself to just a set of colors that's in the Dungeon Dwellers. And then Ogre Skin is actually our... I mixed it in. This uh, this pale green that we've got here, there, is uh, is a mixture of these three colors. A little bit of Troll with a lot of Ogre and a bit of Vampire. Um, makes kind of a camo green color. And then I've got the Ogre Skin mixed with the Vampire Mist for a highlight. And then I've got Straight Up Vampire Mist, which is kind of an off-white. Uh, but it's the closest thing to white in this paint set, so I'm using it as I would use white. Now I've got my goblin skin, and mixing that with this this yellow and this white will make the highlights on the hands here. But yeah, so those are my colors, and the Dungeon Dweller paint sets, I don't know if they sell them, in, I think they still sell them in these sets, but uh, so the one that I'm using primarily is the Monster Colors paint set with the goblin skin, the troll hide, and the ogre skin. And then I'm using a couple of colors from the uh, dungeon colors paint set, which is the vampiric mist. And I'm also using uh, eldritch purple for his gems. So those are the sets, the cute little sets. I think you can also get all the colors individually, but the dark green is just a really, as you can see, that's troll hide. This is a really nice dark green. If you're looking for a dark forest, or jungly green, you're good. Hey, Chromers, how's it going? Hey, no, no problem, DVF, and welcome. I haven't seen you before. I am Anne. I work for Reaper. I used to work for Reaper full time, making this paint line, Reaper Master Series, and uh, now I am going to use this. Put this out of the way. Um, and now I actually live with my guy out on the West Coast, and uh, I just stream for Reaper. So it is fun and hopefully enlightening. So now looking at the light sourcing here. All right, well, I need a lot more light on the back of this arm. But right now, from the front at least, things are looking pretty okay. They're looking pretty real. Hey there, Omidar. Thank you. Yeah, here, let me zoom out so you can see. We're doing lighting on it. We're doing a dramatic lighting effect. So essentially, I want uh, a lot of shadows through the abdomen here where he's bending over. Um, it's highlights up here and then, you know, down the arm, wherever the light is falling. I'm imagining a light source is falling around here, uh, like a spot, like he's in a cave with an opening and that with a, something in the part of the roof that fell in. And so light is kind of dropping down on him from that hole. Um, yeah, so I also make awesome videos and do a Patreon, which is actually the way I live. <laughs> like the Patreon is my main income is patreon.com slash painting big. Um, I also do Twitch, twitch.tv slash painting big. So I do a lot of stuff in addition to Reaper, um, but but this is my morning gig, so to speak. So welcome, welcome. Uh, do 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 do. You made it, Declearman. Good. Yes, glad to know your work didn't hold you up. Uh, I was just fixing the leg on this, fixing the lighting on it, and now I think I want to pop the lighting up just a little bit more over here. Although this is pretty good. This uh, this arm is kind of going down away from the light, except for this area. So I really don't need to put a lot of light down here. I do need more light up here on top of this arm, but I'm, I think I might be more interested at this point in getting this arm figured out so that we can seriously get, you know, the front of the troll looking good. Because right now that's all in shadow. It's all dark. That's why it's just disappearing to the camera, which is great. It makes it look good, but we do need some lighting down here. 
Um, or more to the point, we kind of need some shadow down there. Uh, because if it is really uh, in shadow, you can see here on the torso. There we go, a little bit. So I've, I have highlighted and shaded these, these muscles here. I just haven't done them nearly to the a point that I did here because this is turned away from the light and the head is casting a shadow down here. So with those things in mind, I need to kind of look at my light sourcing and uh, tilt my troll so that I can see where light might fall. A little bit of light is going to fall down here by the knee, I think. Just a bit more. If the light is slanting out, it's going to kind of touch here. But this is going to be mostly in shadow. And of course, the underside of the leg, just like on this side, is going to be mostly in shadow. So what I'm going to do is go over here. Mmm, cupcakes. Cupcakes sound really good. I made mu I have muffins this morning. I had a chocolate. I have chocolate caramel, sea salt chips, and I made a chocolate muffin with that. And then I have everything, everything muffins that I bake. I bake muffins like throughout the week. Just in small batches so that I can always have a tasty muffin for my breakfast. And then we do like bigger real real breakfast, cooked breakfast on the uh, weekend. So now I'm going to do like some really dark shadow here with my black indigo. Start to uh, figure out, because there's definitely light that's going to start falling on the rear side here. And it is going to hit places like this muscle. But there's going to be a shadow underneath it. So let's get close again. But that's what I'm looking at now, is I'm looking at where's the light here? Where do I need to enhance the light? I got very light and bright and yellowy on this leg, and so I really needed to bring it up. It's also pretty yellowy on the front here. So I need to bring that up a little bit all on the back muscles here. The, the lightness of it is right, but either I need to bleach out this a little less, uh, make it look a little yet less yellow, which I probably should. Comparing the two... I think this is maybe a little bit off, so I need to knock that down. See, I can't have bagels because I'm gluten-free, so I bake my own muffins. I do flaxseed muffins with some almond flour also, and I made some everything ones because I was sick of David having everything uh, bagels and me wanting them. Thus why the everything muffin was born. Because really, why not? You can buy everything bagel mix as far as the spices go, the, the minced uh, dried onion and uh, stuff. All right, I am going to try to put a glaze over this to knock it down, and then I'm going to bring it back up with a little bit more of a muted tone. So I'm mixing up really watery paint so that I can put just a, not essentially bring this all of this down with one brushed highlight. This is like putting a filter over what you're painting. Glazes are not washes. You don't let them pool. You just paint them in a very thin layer to shift color, to make it darker or lighter or brighter or more muted, depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to put it over this whole area. And uh, I'm going to start grabbing some of my, you can do this if you're, if you're gutsy, but while it's wet, you can actually uh, bring in some highlights and wet blend a little bit. Not for the faint of heart, of course, because you don't want to mess up your glaze, but if you're really familiar with it, you can do that. So I can start shifting some color here. I also can bring in some of my black indigo in the shadows, because that also will kind of darken and mute things down and make them less bright. Yeah, almond flour is just tasty, Saltor. Its biggest downside is that it's high calorie, but, you know, I managed to make it work. But yeah, I do love... Almond flour is at the center of my gluten-free baking, and I do a lot of gluten-free baking. This weekend will probably be a baking weekend. I, I didn't last weekend because it was uh, Halloween and we had uh, we carved pumpkins and stuff, so... We used up some of our extra time there. I'm going to bring in some black indigo. This is gonna, now we're going to go back to a little bit of wet blending here. So what, blending two colors together while they're still wet. Because I want to get some of this stuff figured out fast. And I want to get it laid in fast. And uh, if I'm going to do that, I may as well wet blend. There. So now I'm darkening down. I've managed to mute that green out a little bit that was there. It's not as yellow anymore. 
Um, but it's still light, which it should be because it's really catching, going to be catching any light that comes down from above here, just like the back of this hand is. So, do do do. I really think cupcakes. Yeah, I think cupcakes are a lot easier. I do I do muffins and cupcakes ex instead of loaves. Like, all my, my cornbread has gone to cornbread muffins, my shortcake has gone to shortcake muffins, and my banana bread has gone to banana bread muffins. So, it's just easier, and the portion, I find it so much easier to judge the calories and the portion size. You can, you know, talk about fictional cupcakes all you want. I'm talking about real muffins. I am, however, kind of annoyed that the ambient temperature in our apartment has kept my banana that I sneakily bought two weeks ago from ripening to the point where I can use it for banana muffins. I wanted to surprise David with banana muffins, and I've carefully hidden away the banana in plain sight, but it is refusing to turn black. It is taking its sweet time, so it looks like perhaps banana muffins are not in the cards for this weekend. Unless it hurries the heck up. All right, so I went green there, so I can go green here. Got to kind of block in that heel. It got a little bit weird. You shouldn't be hungry. With this stream, you should always be hungry. <laughs> All right, so likewise, looking at shadows, I can see there's a little bit of light here, but there's a big shadow there. So I'm actually going to block in that big shadow in black indigo. Big shadow across the back of this leg, or this back of this calf, um, because the the you know bulk of the troll above it is going to cast this shadow. So I'm going to bring it in, going to keep it there, make sure I've got a nice dark black indigo shadow still here, which I do. Um, I may want to actually cast a little bit of a shadow right under this bone water thing he's got. So want to make sure that I've got that in shadow. Once again, do, do just a little bit of wet blending here to try to blend that in. Probably also going to grab a little bit of water on my brush and blend it in that way, which you can do. It takes a little practice to be able to do that, to just like put the paint there and then take a wet brush and blend it into shadow while it's still wet. But it's a useful thing to practice because um, it lets you put a quick shadow in there. Yeah, but then it would be obvious what I'm doing. I'm trying to be stealthy. <laughs> Plus, I don't have a, a small paper bag. I do have an avocado, which is actually probably... The avocados are probably ready to go into the fridge today. But uh, it's all right. It As long as it gets like significantly progressed, because this weekend I want to use it. All right, let's go back to the front. I haven't ever heard about that Polaris. I'm, I tend to be kind of a purist and just wait for them to get to the perfect, you know, gloop, gloopy stage. Because you want them to be pretty much at the point where when you mash them up, they turn liquid. That's the secret to great banana bread. As Alton Brown says in his infinite wisdom, the, the mistake that most people make is they don't wait for the banana to get truly black. Okay, so I'm darkening down in this area here. I need to look, kind of check my lighting. I probably do need to bring that up just a little, but I'm going to hang it here for a moment. I need to really question how much shadow I've got under this leg. I definitely do have that shadow there. It doesn't read badly, but I do need to brighten that up. Got to be consistent, so we got to go, all right. If light is hitting this hip, light is also hitting this muscle. Is the And you could just draw a line. And I can see that there's a shadow under this uh, lat, but then the light is falling on this area here, so that means it is going to fall in this area down here. You kind of got to draw visual lines. Light will travel in a straight line, so. 
If you wonder whether something is getting hit by the light, look at the areas above it and judge whether anything is blocking it or whether it makes sense that it would be lighter. I'll try that. Thanks, Amy. Boop. There we go. Yep, that was a little bit too much, I think. But oh well, I can always lighten it. This is a fun project for me because I, as I've mentioned many times on stream, I originally had a lot of trouble making myself go dark enough for stuff like this kind of scared me. Dark, dark shadows scared me. But now I have overcome a lot of that because dark shadows really give you that drama you want. Get that kind of figured out there. Yummy strawberries. I like strawberry shortcake better, but David likes the raspberry shortcake better. So I made him strawberry shortcake and he was all about it. But then we did raspberry once and he was like, oh, I like this better. And I was like, heathen. <laughs> I like the sweetness of the strawberries and the van with the vanilla shortcake, but he really likes the, uh, the combo, the acid, you know, the tartness of them. So. It's because I have the inveterate sweet tooth in the family, and he's uh, he likes balance between his acid. He does not like sweet, sweet, sweet. I can easily go with sweet, sweet, sweet. But I don't mind. I mean, the raspberry shortcake is tasty, too. So Shortcake is so easy. It's an easy dessert because the making the fruit preserves is super easy. Once I found out how easy it was, I started making it all the time. You know, normally I agree with you, Shadow Raven, but there's just something about doing those fresh cut strawberries in syrup. Like, just the flavor is so fresh. It's so good. I just... Raspberries are good, man, but there's nothing like that. Um, I My shortcake isn't really a shortcake, and actually I hate angel food cake, Chibi. That's the exception to my sweet tooth. Um, I actually detest it. I, I, the, the very flavor of it makes me sick. I don't know what it is, because normally I'm all about the sweet, but angel food cake, ever since I was a child, I really have hated it. Um, but yeah, I should say that my strawberry shortcake isn't shortcake. It's, um, you know, it's kind of a, obviously, since I'm gluten-free and I'm low-carb, it's a kind of uh, smashed-together version of something that could be shortcake-ish. Mostly using almond flour and coconut flour. Essentially, it's very tasty vanilla muffins. Then I cut them in half and put uh, awesome fruit on both halves and put tons of whipped cream on it. And I call it shortcake. Good enough. It's more like a pound cake, actually, now that I think about it. I don't like blackberries, <laughs> mostly because I don't like their texture. Team strawberry, all right, glass, yeah. Yeah, if the strawberries are ripe and fresh, nom nom nom. Yeah, my my shortcake is more like, it, it in texture, it far more, texture and flavor, it far more resembles a bit of vanilla pound cake, I'd say. Which is probably just using the gluten-free flours, it's just the way it turns out. Right, yeah, Shadow Raven. That's that's kind of it here too. We've been trying to kind of um, do locally grown and stuff to support like local farmers and such. So I haven't bought berries recently because they haven't had local ones. They've had Mexican ones instead.
Although it's getting to the time of year when I like to make banana bread and pumpkin bread and stuff like that instead anyway. Different, different types. I mean, we're almost to the holiday cookie baking period. Like, it's getting close. I am so excited. I can't wait to subject David to all of the Christmas cookies. <laughs> all of the holiday cookies. I love the holiday cookie baking. Love, love, love. I might even make the crazy cookie cutter cookies that my mom makes, except now she doesn't because they're such a pain in the butt. And so she doesn't have kids in the house anymore and she doesn't make them. Unless my cousins really, really want them. Or my, sorry, my niece and nephew. They're the best taking, tasting cookie cutter cookies I've ever had, but they have sour cream in the recipe, so they're really sticky. So for a cutout cookie, they're really just a massive pain. But they taste so good. So I might decide they're worth the pain this year and get out my cookie cutters. Snickerdoodles are tasty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like dark chocolate ganache. I'm not a white chocolate fan. Yes, a mini painter icing cookie cutter cookies. Yes, Val. It's it, it's as bad as you'd think. <laughs> Actually, I don't go all the way because I like to eat them. I don't like to like... If I make them too pretty, then I won't eat them. So I, uh, I tend to go pretty uh, third grade with my decorations. Do the simple stuff. I did actually win at the county fair when I was, I want to say early high school, maybe late grade school, maybe in eighth grade, but I actually won in the county fair for decorated cookies. So yes, there is a precedent to your fear there, Val. I did dog cookies. I cut out the dog head shapes and everything because I was in the 4-H dog training project and I, uh, I did like four cookies that were decorated as dogs and I won. <laughs> I think I won second. I don't think I won first. The waffles do a cookie thing. Oh yeah. That's cool. I have a dragon, but it's so big. And I've got a um let's see, I've got a dragon, I've got something else. I've got dogs. I've got of course I've got a Shiloh Shepherd cookie cutter. It's a German Shepherd, but I've adapted it. It's kind of a fluffy looking German Shepherd, so I kind of think it's a Shiloh anyway. But yeah, and then I have uh I think I have I have a bunch of Christmas shapes and I have some Halloween shapes too. But I didn't make Halloween cookies. It's, it's seldom. Like, if I'm going to do Halloween uh, cookies, it, it has to be usually for a Halloween party. And I'll do, like, chocolate uh, sugar cookies with orange icing. But my favorite Christmas cookies are actually um, Danish butter cookies, the spritz cookies. And uh, I think I might try a lemon version this year, too, because I love lemon cookies. And then uh, Russian tea cakes or Mexican wedding cakes, whatever you want to call them. The pecan kind of shorties, shortbreads um, with the uh, powdered sugar. I have, I have a low-carb version of those, if you can believe it. <laughs> oh, you have the nesting dragon bunt cake. That's cute. Yeah, we called them crescents because mom always shaped hers into crescent moons. And they were always her favorites. And we, we, we really loved them. The kids really loved them too. Um, but I can make those. I make such a good Russian tea cake that Ed actually asked me to make some for him last Christmas to gift to Dave's wife because she loved um, Russian tea cakes. And mine were the best that Ed had ever had. So there you go, guys. There you go. I've been endorsed by Reaper CEO Ed Pugh for making amazing Russian tea cakes. Oh, interesting. Cardamom. Maybe I'll try that chibi. I mean, I love my straight up like vanilla butter cookies. Don't get me wrong. Um, they Mine use vanilla and almond flavoring. And so since I'm using almond flour, they actually end up tasting a lot like, like Danish uh, um, almond cookies <laughs> instead of uh, just butter cookies. But uh, cardamom could be interesting. I love cardamom. Yeah, Chibi, do it. Do it on my Discord for sure. Do it in off topic. Yeah, if anybody has any really interesting holiday cookie recipes like that, share them. Because, you know, we're all going to be looking for fun stuff to bake this winter. Because God knows we're still going to be all in, like, quarantine city. And the weather's going to be crappy, too. So let's bake. 
let's channel our inner um, Great British Baking Show uh, personas and go for it. Like, it's too bad that we can't virtually transmit cookies through the ether because then we could do a bake-off. Tuning, fine-tuning the side of the leg here, as you can see. Oh, lady fingers. Swedish spice cookies. Yeah, can you, um, yeah, put, put some of that stuff up. Because Swedish spice cookies sound tasty, too. The Great Reaper Baking Bonanza. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, I have, yes, yes, I have, um, cookie, I have a cookie press, too. Yeah, I have a cookie press with little, um, you know, the little shape, uh, thingies that you can put on them. Pazzles. Oh, anise seeds. Oh, I'm all for that, Val. Post that if, if you have a recipe for that. Maybe I could look it up because I actually, I've got aniseed um, because uh, it goes in some of our, uh, I'm doing a lot more like Eastern inspired stuff. So I've been experimenting with aniseed because that's a flavor that I personally love. David doesn't like it in sweet, claims he doesn't like it as much in sweet stuff, but I bet I could uh, find a recipe that would work. He, he also claimed he didn't like chicken marsala that much until I made it, and now he wants it, <laughs> like, a lot. I'm, I'm thrilled that I've learned to cook this late in my life. Like, I feel, I feel like Julia Child, in a way. Like, I'm not famous, but at least I, I actually learned to cook before, you know, before I was ridiculously old. And now I have a lot of fun with it. So now we're highlighting the, the, the foot, the mutated foot. You used to make spritzes with it, Twisted Oma. Cool. Yeah, everybody share recipes. That's a great holiday thing to do. And then we can all share pictures of the cookies we make. <laughs> Very Swedish. Interesting. Mine is, is German, generally, but... Yeah, famous subjective. That's true. I'm not Julia Child famous. I'm not famous for my baking or cooking but i am i am pretty happy that i've gotten good enough that i can make david things that he didn't used to like all that much and he uh decides that they are now one of his favorite things chicken marsala is pretty kick butt though so you know for that man not to have liked chicken marsala he must have had some really bad ones now there are some really bad chicken marsalas out there totally but there we go. We've got our happy foot coming up. Now we need to put some light on this because it's definitely going to get some, especially toward the outside. Scandinavian and Irish, so you love cookies. Yeah, I love I love finding new cookie recipes because I like to try to adapt them to low carb and see how uh, how they come out. So I must admit that I. My, rather than my dietary restriction being a, a burden, it is actually uh, inspiring and makes me want to try. Makes me want to see how good I can manage to make standard recipes by making them uh, low carb and gluten free. All right, let's get some of this uh, pale orange mixed so that I can highlight his toes. What do we got? Yeah, we have about half an hour left can get and then I can work more on the front of the leg which is mostly in shadow <laughs> keep sour flower eggs yeah I could totally do that oh Ennis or Ennisette oh yeah yeah if you can find let's see here let me write those down uh, at least if I write down the name Val I can uh, look it up later Pizzell. That sounds super tasty, and I love anise, and I don't have any anise. Or, because it's not a popular flavoring in the USA, I don't have any recipes for aniseed cookies. So let me. I bet that most of the recipes I find don't have the anise flavor. I'll have to look one second while I write that down. And usually anise or aniseed, vanilla or lemon zest. All right. Thanks for that tip off there, Val. I had never heard of those cookies and they sound right up my alley.
All righty. Huh. Yeah, usually my almond flavored things, because I love, I love marzipan. Um, <laughs> but I also, my, uh, my little spritz cookies that are very, very almondy, uh, they usually, they usually hit my almond. Because I use all almond flour to make them for the most part. They usually will satisfy my almond craving. But those sound, uh, the rosettes sound really interesting. It has to be, the thing is that since I'm so very busy all the time, it has to like be this marriage between really, really tasty and not too involved to make. I have to be able to toss it together relatively quickly. Because when I bake, I don't like to like lose a ton of time to it unless I'm making like big batches of cookies for the holidays or something. I actually love frozen cookies and frozen cake. Just from when I was a kid, my mom used to freeze them and I would sneak down to get like a Christmas cookie. I would sneak down and take one out of the freezer. And so I got addicted <laughs> to fro the, the taste of frozen cookies and cakes, which is so weird. All right, so I'm, I'm pretty much blocking and see how I'm putting those shadows, those shadows into the musculature here. And I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to be trying to make those muscles stand out a little bit, just a little, not a lot. We still have a lot of shadow. And I really need to make a demarcation here. I need to figure out if uh, part of this muscle is actually in shadow. It probably is. So I'm going to add a little bit of dark to it. It seems like it goes a little bit too far forward to me. After you work with light sources for a while, you get kind of a feeling for this stuff. You kind of get like, a, mm, that looks weird or different. Why is it wrong? And then you can go in and kind of say, oh, yeah, well, because this is going to be all in dark. So this has to be somewhat dark as it goes toward it. And then this can get a little lighter, just a tiny bit as it comes out here. And then you kind of marry them up so that they look correct together. But as it is, I can see light falling there. Now you want a frozen Snickers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 50 is a lot. My mom would make like seven or eight, and now she's down to like three. I never got into frozen candy bars. I could see I could see the attraction, though. I could totally see it. All right, little toes of troll. Tro troll toes. Now we'll bring a little bit of highlight. See this light orange color that I'm using. Bring a little bit of highlight up on these toes, especially toward the outside of the foot, which is where a lot of the light is going to fall. We've got a lot of really kind of cool color interaction here where the orange goes into the green, which I really like. It's really organic. There, that's looking pretty good. I want a little more orange toward the outside here. Neat. I love reading about all this stuff. Yeah, I get inspired to bake, guys. Baking is such a great stress reliever, and you get tasty things to eat at the end of it. Like, can't beat it. Yeah, more orange. I like that orange. <laughs> Alrighty. Just a little bit more light up here. There. That makes his, his foot looks globulous and gross. That that works for a troll, I think. I'm enjoying this. So don't forget the D&D &D stream today, guys. I've got I've got my list of stuff we need to figure out. We're going to talk a bit about the northern Spartan kind of empire, the human empire, and uh, about temples. We need to I realize that, you know, 
part of the infrastructure of any good city is uh, having a couple of temples with influential high priests who can throw monkey wrenches into the town council's plans and uh, also offer up stuff for the adventurers to do. So I um, want to figure out who the main temples are in uh, Port Abandon and also maybe kind of roughly outline their high priest or priestesses. Um, and then uh, we need to figure out magic and tech level. Like I know there's clockwork in the Arabesque city, but other than that, we need to figure out the tech level of the world in general and where, you know, like how advanced are we talking here? Um, you know, in other words, the, the, the base fantasy question is always, uh, are there primitive firearms, right? Or are there primitive cannon? Does any civilization have them yet? Um, and then uh, I want to talk a little bit about the third founder of Port Abandon, who is our Tifling noble, our young Tifling nobleman. Um, and what sort of, because uh, he's from the... From Hambril, actually. He's the one non-Karshani. -Kar uh, and uh, the the Tiflings there are Fae. So they would be based on, on fairy courts and stuff like that. Allied to that sort of power. Um, and so we need to... I want to de design him a little bit more. Because I'm starting now to write up um, entries for our town founders and, i.e., council members. Uh, since they also are important people in the town and likely to have... Uh, organize bounties and missions and things that need to be done. So I want to define them a little bit before we get into it. So that's what we're going to be doing in the D&D &D game this uh, afternoon. And I thank you to everybody who posted up their favorite dice rolling systems. There's some really interesting ones in there. I have in mind to use each one of those systems to roll three sets of numbers to give myself an idea of how they work because uh, some of them are intriguing. I can see how some could be um, could result in very high numbers. Um, but, you know, maybe... My, I don't know how my dice karma is these days. So I'll have to dig out my D&D, &D, get my D&D &D dice. All right, so I'm shading with uh, Black Indigo very heavily down here where these gems are. Most of these gems are going to stay pretty dark uh, because they're on the underside of his leg. They're going to be a lot... See, I'm painting them Black Indigo. I'm going to be a lot in shadow. I'll bring a little bit of Eldritch Purple into them. but uh, And the ones on the edge here will be purple for sure. We'll come up more like our, our gemstone friends over here. Um, oh, King Arthur Flower has a fantastic baking book. Hmm. Yeah, King Arthur seems like a pretty good corporation. I used to use their flowers. They still have, they have a decent gluten-free mix, I think. But uh, not low carb, so... All right, so just adjusting this a little bit more. I think I went a little low on that highlight. The underside of the muscles are going to be dark. So we got to remember, if we want our dramatic lighting, we've got to remember not to sacrifice your darkness. Darkness. So got to make sure to put that in and keep it there. Don't be tempted to highlight it too much. Let's see, and, and then if I can bring the shadow up here, then it, it carries that illusion of that deep, see this deep shadow here. Now I'm being really consistent as to how deep in shadow these areas are in this whole line from up under the arm down. So you can see, here, let me turn on my overhead. All right. See how dark I'm keeping all that. And so when you turn off the overhead and you just look at it, all of that falls into that, that broad shadow down here. And it's consistent. So your light, you can really see your light falling from this area down this whole area, but not intruding too far to the front. So what I need to do probably is to take down this area just a little bit. I actually really love eating low carb Saltor. I think that's the reason is I actually enjoy the flavors and the textures more now than I do like going back to regular glutinous stuff that I just, I don't like it as much. I guess my palate has really changed. Um, so for me, I prefer to stay low carb. I also feel a lot better. Like to be honest, it really influences how I feel. If I, um, if I start doing a lot of carb, if I were to go off of low carb, I would get a lot of digestive upset. 
at this point. I've tried it and it's done that. So I have a direct incentive in addition to just liking how it tastes. I have a direct incentive health wise to, if I want to sleep well and be comfortable, um, I really need to stay mostly low carb. And I find that pretty effortless up until the actual holidays. Like if we're going to go to, um, we might go to be going down to Arizona for my fam to see my family for Thanksgiving. Um, my brother might actually bring his family down uh, as he's been, he's been around that my, my family is kind of in Wisconsin, all, all in Wisconsin right now, though the parents are now driving to Arizona. Um, but they've been, you know, exposed to each other throughout the spring and summer. So they're not worried about Pete bringing the family down to my parents, Arizona place. So I'm thinking I kind of miss my family. So I may make the odyssey David and I may toss Kiri in the car and go do it. But then I'll go off diet for a day, maybe two. Hey, Daffodur. Well, welcome back. Oh, that's ridiculous, Twistedoma. Somebody had to make a rolling pin with cookie cutters on it. Wow. All right, let's see here. I do need to raise just a little bit of light into this. This is a little bit dark because I do have some highlights up here. And so I need a little bit more here. It's just reading black right now. I don't want that. It needs just a little bit of light. There's going to be some bounced light. So I can get away with slight highlights on my dark muscles. I just don't want to go too far. I got to keep it really low key. Just enough to pick up the light just a little so it's not just a dark mass. There we go. It's a little bit better. And uh, I've got to kind of shape these muscles on the front that I just kind of blocked in and then I left to sit there. And I did say there was going to be a little light on the knee down there. Just be careful about some of the chemicals that go into that stuff. There was a time, there was a time when we all joked at Reaper about uh, making Reaper miniatures in chocolate, but you know, the equipment is not food safe, so it's just not a thing. So before you eat your terrain, make sure that the molding equipment you've been using is actually food safe because uh, yeah. Non-toxic and food safe are not the same thing, guys. Not the same thing. So I put in a little bit of a brighter highlight back here. So I could come in and paint over it a bit. Make it a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter on the knee as well. Yeah, I have a ton of baking tools also. I mean... For sure, I should be baking more, but but I don't know. This winter, I think I'm going to be baking quite a bit. I have high hopes. I am optimistic. I wish to make much tasty cookies. Winter really gets me in the mood to bake. It really, really does. All right, I'm getting a little closer to where I want to be with this stuff now. Definitely made a lot of progress today in refining stuff and getting it to look better. Smoothing it out. I definitely, this whole arm is just like a train wreck and it needs help. Needs help, Kiri. Kiri's like, I'm sleeping, don't wake me up. So we need to definitely tackle this arm in the next... Uh, if I keep working on troll, this arm is the next project. Probably should do it just to get the gemstones, uh, get more gemstones in here. Putting in some black indigo shadows here. 
really much uh, for anything big like this for trolls ogres you name it doing a wet blend for your base coat just like smooshing the colors together to get your uh shadows and highlights worked in is a great idea it gets you along the road to where you want to be very fast um and it's a technique that although i don't find it to be like an, an essential technique it's a technique that's very useful wet blending can uh, can be it can really help you on big muscly models like this to just do fast blends to set things up and then all you need to do is refine and that's always the more fun part but but he has progressed a lot today he has definitely progressed oh we need to do um highlights on this foot while i've got this orange mixed up i did highlights on other foot but i did not do highlights on this foot let's get our orangey yellow what i did is i mixed our goblin skin with this uh ogre flesh plus yellow and uh got a nice kind of pale orangey gold highlight for them and now i'll bring it in and if I need to shade, I'll shade with Goblin. Kind of get the little tips of the toes to make the nails stand out better. here see just making those little bit of highlights there on the feet helps them to come out ha. I mean if your airbrush is really clean um, and they're willing to clean it afterwards um, a lot of bakeries use airbrushing to do like truffles and stuff like that to do fancy designs on stuff or cookies or frosting. So not unknown, but you should suggest to them that they get their own airbrush that they use for food. That way they can clean it appropriately and you can clean yours appropriately because some of the solvents you use to clean an airbrush probably are not food safe, you know? But yeah. Right, you can do some beautiful stuff with airbrushing on baked goods, but definitely stay safe health-wise. Yeah, there you go, Scrying Eye. Say, hey, honey, I want to do some really beautiful cakes and cookies, but I need an airbrush. And uh, the problem is once you use it for uh, miniatures, I don't know, you have to clean it really well probably to use it on food again safely. I guess it's not insurmountable probably so now I've got my foot there and this foot is darker but I've got some nice color on this foot and it looks better best thing is that now it looks like the light is falling on it which is what we wanted if you need to shade it you can use goblin or you can uh, bring in this green again or a little bit of both Having a few green tones mixed into my oranges, I like for this troll. I like the complexity that it gives the uh, model. Yeah, there you go. Badger with the with the win. Use one of your airbrushes. Uh, get the two airbrush package and use one for food and one for minis. If I find that I'm going a little pale here. Or I lose some of my saturation, I can always glaze with my goblin skin to bring more orange in. Like I did. Make it warmer. More like in tune with where it is there. Still looks pretty light, especially compared to this dark shadow I'm keeping on the front of the leg. I'll grab some black indigo and actually make this even darker down the front of the leg. Black in some of these crystals. Especially the underside of these crystals. It's going to be some dark here for sure. And there's going to be a bit of a shadow here where the 
light falls. I'm going to have to blend it in to the foot here. So I'm going to grab water while it's still wet and just kind of blur in the edge there fast. You are not nearly as bad as Val, <laughs> Dragon Eye. <laughs> Val really has an airbrush problem. He put up a picture somewhere of his airbrush problem. Yes, I imagine that many of you have many airbrushes. Bring in a little bit more of this dark on the front of the foot. Don't want to go too far, but I want to blend it in a little bit. Because the leg is like definitely bending over there. So there, that's a little bit better. So I want that shadow because this is, the light's going to fall, but it's definitely going to have a shadow underneath this leg. See? And that's what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is where's my light? And is that about right? I think that's about right. We've got a nice dark shadow. Yeah, there we go. You see the shadow falling on the foot from the leg. That's perfect. <laughs> Saltar. Yeah, stick to brushes for now. <coughs> There's plenty of time to learn. Airbrushing isn't going to go away. It's it's a, it's become a foundational technique in our hobby. So, after you've gotten your brush skills down and you're excited about to try something new, then try again. Give an airbrush a try. Yeah, we've got no room. I mean, David goes and uses his airbrush out on our deck pretty much when it's nice out. We don't have uh, a lot of room for it in here, and we don't want to have aerosolized paint really in the atmosphere around here with our dog lit. Right, Kiri? You don't want to breathe it. The dog lit does not need to breathe aerosolized uh, paint, so... And we don't have a big hood for the indoors. So right now David uses a mask mask and does it outdoors. But we do he doesn't airbrush very often and I never do. Yeah, I saw Rhonda did a review of Lovejoy's classes. This, Rhonda's a great she's a great adventurer. Uh, she's more adventuresome than me. She's like, you know, getting back into all sorts of different art mediums. She's gonna be extremely well rounded from all of that influence. I expect great things from Rhonda on miniatures coming up. All right, light's good. Light's good. We're, we made a lot of progress today. I could do, I'm, I've got my oranges, so I should do this hand actually. Um, get some of this highlight in here, get it blocked out. Lots of highlight up on the heel of the hand. Light here. Because there's gonna be definitely light falling at some point to hit that. So I need to, that this arm is projecting forward. So there's gonna be light. Some of our orange put down here. I am leaving still a lot of green in the shadows just because that's kind of what I've been doing all along with this troll. I like the kind of melding together of the oranges and the greens. I think olive green is a really good shadow for this muted orange. Um, so I like working with that. 
you never need to shade and highlight something with uh, a, just a lighter version of the same. You can always mix it up. Like here, my light highlight for the orange isn't a lighter orange. It's, it's orange mixed with like yellow and off-white. It's a little bit different. Let's see. I did keep a little bit of green on the back of the hand on this other hand. So I'm going to bring in my troll flesh and make sure that I don't forget to do that over here. A little bit of green. Don't want to forget. Now we'll do our lighter orange to bring up this hand in front. Okay, have fun, Chibi. Bye. Thanks for coming. We're almost there. We're almost the end of the stream. We've had a very good little kiri dog today. No emergencies. I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. I hope a lot of you can show up to my stream on my channel today for our D&D &D session. D&D &D world creation session. Blend this orange color in, get my highlights down. There we go, got some light coming in. Very much enjoying where this troll is going. Hmm, oh, I missed a spot on the back of his hand there. Got some unpainted area between the fingers. Bad Anne, no cookie. Gotta fix that. There, that's looking much better. Let's see here. We are pretty much in another couple minutes. I'll text Justin and tell him we'll need a raid start to get set up, but I'm going to try to make this hand really come together first. You guys can see how I use a mix of uh, wet blending and, you know, layering, kind of blocking here and there to, uh, Kind of get all of this pulled together. I think he's a really cool troll so far. There we go. Now I've got that hand coming forward a bit. We need to also bring parts of this arm forward a bit. We can keep this dark shadow here. We definitely need more light up here. We need a little more light out here. I'm going to do a lot of wet blending to do these big areas just makes sense it takes a long time to smoothly layer a big rounded area like these muscles but it takes very little time to uh, wet blend them when you have the room so make it kind of come out a little bit there so you can see how the light is falling on this wrist because when I turn the troll toward the light sourcing that I'm expecting from the top down because this is my big ring light up here um, you can see like that it does seem like there is going to be a little bit of shadow over here whereas down here you know you see there's not much light at all but here you can really see those highlights that I just put in so we definitely know that we need shadows uh, we need highlights there so we can work on bringing up some of that detail we do still want shadow coming in from the underside of the arm. So I'll refine that a little bit. Let's 
I'm going to bring in my black indigo. And this is the advantage of having all these colors. And, and notice that I have not added water. Like, we've done the whole stream. Like, a couple of colors, I maybe added a drop or two of water in as we were working with them. All these colors are a perfect consistency. I could work this way with them for at least another, um, probably another 45 minutes to an hour, and I'd be just fine. So that's, I mean, an example of how you don't need a wet palette to keep your paint wet. And if you're trying to keep your paint at a specific consistency, the well palette can really um, serve you. Hmm, I missed an area down here. There we go. All right. Ah, all righty. There's this, there's that. Oh, I'm going to get that shoulder a bit more. And then we'll back out and look at him because I think he's looking really good right now. So now we're trying to get some light up here. There definitely would be. And then you can see how little I've blended up here. I mean, it's really choppy. We got a lot of blocky highlights. That's all right. This early stage, it's perfectly all right to be all choppy and unblended and just uh, block in your light and your shadows and then refine from there. You've got all your colors, so it's going to be super easy to layer and blend. And once you, you really, at the beginning though, you want that placement. You want to make sure that you've got your highlight and shadow placement right. Nail the placement, then nail the blending. Made a very harsh shadow there, so I'm gonna blend that in with some green. Got just a little bit of light there, but I want that dark shadow on the, under the shoulder. It's very perpendicular and it's very away from the light source. It's not lifting up toward anything here, so this is a very dark shadow. And I probably want to keep a lot of this in shadow. Yeah, good, Carrie Michael. Awesome. I'm glad it's working for you. Yeah, that's just the thing. Like, right, when you start miniature painting. You really are trying to get, you're trying to learn paint consistency, right? You're trying to learn what does my paint need to look like to, to get the effect that I want or that I see like me or Rhonda or whoever, you know, whoever you're, you're following to get that effect. How thin or thick does my paint need to be, right? Cause that's key. And it's hard to internalize that when you're working with a wet palette where every brushful that you mix is a little bit different. And so it can be very effective if you're having trouble with your wet palette. It can be very effective to switch to a well until you learn the paint consistency. Then try your wet palette. See how much faster you can get the mixes that you need, right? Because you definitely can adapt to using the wet, the wet palette, you know, um, much better once you have a good grasp of paint consistency. But it, it helps sometimes. It really does help to go to the well palette and just learn what, what does it look like when I want a layering consistency or a glazing consistency. And then you can go back to wet palette and you can nail that. Um, but until you see it and are able to consistently reproduce it, it can be very hard to get a good gut feeling for that sort of thing, right? Hey, Trashorama. Thank you for the 16 months in a row. I would expect nothing less from the awesome guy who makes our emojis. All right. Well, what do you guys think? Like, I think he's looking like freaking awesome. 
Like, today really helped pull him together. Like, from the front, he is, like, almost there. Like, I need to get the crystals. Crystals might be tomorrow's stream. We might do a lot of crystals just to get him working. Um, but I'm really liking this. I think he looks awesome. And the lighting is really consistent. Right up to, yeah, yeah, about up to here. And then once I start hitting the back of this arm, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we're not consistent anymore. But we're getting there. This is, you can see this is still in progress. You can see there's still a lot of stuff that doesn't clearly telegraph where our light is coming from. Um, and I haven't lightened it up up here and stuff like that. But but all down here, up to, like I said, he needs to work on this arm. But from, from the front to the side now, he looks great. And he's totally a different style than I normally paint, too. He's this, he's the cartoony, really heavy um, highlight and shadow style. So it's nice every once in a while to push and do something that you're not really up with, right? Like, I'm kind of feel, I kind of felt like doing this high drama style this week um, as a break from some of the other stuff we've been working on. Uh, and it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, so I have to say I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you guys have been enjoying it as well. So it is good. I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to text the Justin. One second. <laughs> my, I'm like, my brother is texting? Oh, it's political stuff. <laughs> Let's see here. Where is my Justin? We need a raid. So I guess I can do the, I'm in the role of Justin today, right? So we have Crow's Nest maybe later today, guys, at about uh, 3 p.m. Am I right? Or is it 4 p.m.? 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and then about 4.30 or 4.45 Central Time, I'll pop in and do my D&D stream over on my stream, which is twitch.tv slash painting big. Um, and uh, thank you, by the way, for my recent patrons. I've gotten some patrons at my Patreon, patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, thank you so much. You keep me going. You guys really, really do. You make it possible for me to, like, not stress out about money. I'm so grateful. Um, so, yeah. So, I told Justin we need a raid. And that he should come in with that. We'll see that pop up in the chat. I guess I cast summon uh, Justin one. Oh, with Izzy today. Awesome. Crow's Nest with Izzy. Oh, that'll be fun, guys. That'll be super fun. So, yeah. Definitely go over there and have fun. And then, you know, wander over to my stream at some point when, uh, when you feel like it or if you feel like it. We'll do some fun stuff. Either way, this afternoon will be fun and un uh, anxiety relieving. Yes. <laughs> I don't see our... Okay. Justin says he's looking for a raid now. Expect it at any second. So, yep, there's Troll. I'm so happy with Troll. I hope you guys are happy with Troll. I really like Troll. He's looking so good. So awesome. Yeah, so many people. So many good painters online right now. Go and toss them your your follows and your subs and your eyeballs. <laughs> make everybody feel good on today, okay? Today is a, is a make everybody feel good day. I would share virtual cookies with all of you. Where are we, Justin? Not yet, not yet. Justin must be like, up, you know, like just pouring over all of his choices. Yes, I will see you all later. I guess I'll fade out. All right. See you guys on my stream later. See you on Proctor's stream. See you around in general. I hope you have a wonderful day. Everybody have a fun and relaxing night, okay? All right. We will see you in a while.